Good morning, friends. And uh, yes, today we have with us uh, Dr. Narendran, who is a dermatologist by profession and is an independent medical practitioner uh, here in Malaysia. At the same time, he is also coordinating clinical skills for us 10 years uh, yes, in a yes. renowned medical university in Malaysia. And it's a great thing that he is with us. And uh, today, of course, we will be learning more on the practical stuff on pharmacology that's about injections. Yes. Because that matters a lot because uh, clinicians are supposed to be going on for injections and so on for all therapies. So let's begin with intramuscular injection uh, and then, of course, the subcutaneous ones. So I welcome Dr. Narain to the show uh, again. And let's see what he is going to have us for in this Hi, everyone. Let's see what we can do. Hi, Narendra. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, how are you now? Uh, actually, not great. Uh, actually, I got pain, you know, my back pain. Yeah. Right. And actually, it's not getting uh, better. Right. For the last uh, three, four days, it's going down. And okay. The condition is difficult. I'm not able to walk okay. properly. And pain comes and goes. Okay. Right. As of now, whatever results that have been done, come yeah. done so far, yeah. all looks normal. Yeah. So what we will do is, basically all you would need is one intramuscular injection at the moment of any pain killers probably. We will give a diet at the moment. Okay. We will give it to you in your muscle at the moment and then I think we will have to wait for a while to see whether it subsides. If not, we need more investigation to substantiate our diagnosis. As of now, whatever results that have come, okay. it looks normal. Okay. All right. So, which, 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 where do you would like to take your injection? Either Actually, uh, there's a lot of anxiety associated okay. with muscular, I mean, intramuscular right. injection. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, I usually take it on arm, but the last time okay. I have taken is around 10 years back. So, right. I mean, no, it should be okay. It should yeah. be okay. Basically, I'll tell you where exactly in the arm I would normally choose. Okay. Can you push your sleeve up? Yes. yes. All right. Are you allergic to any drug? Uh, no. No. Okay. All right. Now, all you will do is, I will choose this particular area. Okay. This is called as a deltoid muscle. Okay. Normally in the deltoid, normally we don't, we choose a particular area. There are some specific reasons for that based uh -huh. on the anatomical structures that are in that area. Okay. Normally we choose, since my fingers are about bigger uh -huh. and compared to the rest, normally it's about two finger breadth from the region of the acromion process. Okay. If you put that, that's a prominence here, yeah, Yes, right? that's a bony part here. Yeah. You need to place three fingers and below that you need to give that injection. Okay. Or optional. Wherever the muscle gets inserted, uh -huh. which looks like a triangle actually, the base of the triangle is here, the apex is here. Okay. From the insertion, another two to two and a half, two to three finger breadth above, okay. you choose a side. This either one of these, either from above downwards three fingers okay. or below upwards from the side of insertion, three fingers. Three choice fingers. is yours, in the midpoint, okay. you give an injection. Normally what we do is, we look into a lot of other things, since uh -huh. your arm looks very much clean and yeah. fine, we will choose this particular area uh -huh. it is going to be only about a 1 ml injection okay. and it is not more than 2 ml or what, if it's more than 2 ml and it's an oil based injection, it's better to take in a place where there is a large muscle. Okay. So gluteal region will be better for such injections, okay. but as for this one, since it is just a water base, it's only 1 ml, uh -huh. it's better to take in the arm and normally we, are you a right handed left handed? I'm uh, actually right-handed. Right-handed. So it's better to take it on yeah, your hands so that it pays yes. also. It should yes. be a problem. So this is an area that we normally choose. Okay. So if you 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 said you're a little kind of an allergy, yeah. anxious about yes. injections. Yes. Yes. So don't have to worry. It look like an iron break. Now the needles are very good, fine. Oh, is it? Things should be okay with you. So don't worry. Okay. And then if you still find it a bit difficult, there are other methods that we adopt. Uh -huh. Basically, what we do is we put some. Uh, local anesthetic spray in that particular area. Okay. If that is not accessible, we uh -huh. take a scoop of ice, uh -huh. just numb that particular area that we are going to give and then we give an inch a shot of the injection. Okay. I need to take some rest after? Uh, I don't think so. You can still carry on unless you will be here with us for the next 10 minutes after this. Okay. If you have any kind of giddiness, then we can take care of you. I don't think it will cause and your age is not that much. <laughs> that's there definitely. That's but regarding the pain at the site yes. of the injection, do I need to do uh, Normally you don't have to do anything, it is just an ant because of the fine bore of the needle, okay. you won't feel a thing. Maybe at that point of time you will. Yeah. Because, uh, I don't know, one question comes to my mind is like, you know, uh, my mother had taken an injection a few months back and that right. was on to uh, the duty region, right? Is it, is it is it better to take it on this side? Uh, or what see, now with your, it's basically comfortability. If uh -huh. you are okay with 
taking yeah. an injection but ideally if you look at it that is a hassle free area when compared to other areas yes. and looking at the size of the muscle in the arm I don't think one ever okay, so be a major issue thin maybe yes thin the person who is small size yeah. very thin muscle bulk is bare yeah. minimum they say take it in the bump rather than taking in taking the injection in the arm any other complications which you can have? No, worried about just, uh, just no, no, There is exactly. no question of complications. It's more no. the fear, the anxiety. The bleeding? Uh, bleeding, no. Nothing to be worried about. These needles are very, very fine and uh, you won't feel a thing when it is being given. Okay. So, no matter what. Okay. So, okay. I'll give you so don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. Thank you very much. Yeah. But one more time. Yeah. Are you allergic to any drug? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Till that's, now. That, that's better. Yeah, I mean, so, I have taken injections like two, three times in my okay. life till now. But right. at least till whatever I know, I'm right. not allergic to any Good, good. Good then. Anyway, okay. let me load all the injection and come back to you. Yes. They give you the injection. Thank okay, you. So Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Doctor. Lie down for a while. We'll yeah. be back. All right. Uh, before you give any injection, the best thing that you need to do is the must thing. In fact, before you are do any injection, you need to follow certain principles before you administer a drug, which is called right patient. Basically, when you approach the patient, talk to the patient to find out whether he is he is the same person whom you are supposed to deliver the injection. Second. You need to look at the right drug as well. So what you need to do is flip through the pages of the prescription one more time prior delivering the injection to that particular individual. Take the drug, check whether they, that coincides with the name of the drug that is being prescribed and once that is identified then you will have to know whether there are certain other things in the drug apart from the name that you have to look into. Now the next thing that you will have to look into is the expiry date of the drug, then the volume of drug that is there within the container. Second if it is in the form of a liquid or in a powder form if it is in the powder you need to dilute it and then you will have to based on the dose that needs to be administered you have to dilute accordingly as per the instruction now next what you need to do is you there are drugs that is available in the market either in two forms one is in this kind of a bottle the other will be in this kind of another bottle so this is a large container whereas this one is only for this is a small container this large container is what is called as a vial and this is called as an ampule vial the advantage of vial is it is based on the name it carries a prefix called as multi dose vial as the name goes by multi dose means it can be given for multiple patients and it can be reused till it is till you approach the expiry date but after every use caution after every use this has to be maintained under a temperature at which the drug is stable so it has to be refrigerated so that is one of the important precautions that you need to do if it is a vial next one if you look at it this is a small glass container this is a ampule so we give another prefix for this ampule as well and we call it as single dose ampule it has got a neck, it has got a, it has got a junction between a body and the upper portion. That junction is what is called as the neck and it is cracked in that particular area and drug is being taken into the syringe and it is being administered. And remember, it is only a single use and it cannot be used after that. And you just draw the drug into the syringe, you deliver the drug, job is done. So these are the two containers in which a drug is available in the market. Just for revision purposes, this is a vial, multi-dose vial, whereas this one is an ampule and it is a single dose ampule. These are the two you load the drug. Now, prior loading the drug, the one if you are loading a drug from an ampule or a vial, normally, if let us see how exactly would you do it if it's from an ampule. Now, I already mentioned, if you look at the ampule, there is a small yellow color line that runs across between the body of the ampule and the head end. Normally, what they do is, you are supposed to take a gauze piece. Prior to that, a small knife is taken and it is run across the line one single round. After which, you need to take a gauze piece, wrap it around the head end of the ampule and move it in the opposite direction so that it cracks exactly on the line that has been already been made. Why do you don't break it towards you because chips of glass might hurt you. You break it away from yourself so that you do not hurt anybody. Once that is done with the gauze piece and chips of glass that is there in your hand, you discard it into the dustbin and this is ready for use. One. Whereas if it is a vial, if it is a vial, it has got an aluminium covering that protects the rubber stopper there. 
and all you have to do is you need to peel off the aluminium which exposes the rubber stopper that you see within the aluminium. Now next you have to take an alcohol swab prior piercing the needle to take the drug into the syringe. Take an alcohol swab, clean that particular area, leave it to dry and then load the injection into the syringe. I hope you know how exactly it could be done when it comes to loading of drug from a vial from a let us see how do you load an injection from a vial first of all. Prior to that, you have, by looking at the principles of the drug, you have checked the name of the drug, you have checked the name of the dilution, check the dilution in which it is marketed. Then you take an alcohol swab, smear it on the surface of the bottle so that the rubber stopper is clean from impurities if any. Once that is done, you take a syringe and you take the respective IM needle which is about 23 gauge needle, fix it to the syringe, remove the cap and you are ready to go. Now, if you are supposed to deliver 1 ml of an injection, prior delivering it, you need to withdraw about 1 ml of air into the chamber of the syringe. Once that is done, take the needle. I am a right handed person, so I prefer to hold the needle in my right hand. I will take the IM vial which, in, which the drug has, in which the drug is there in my least dominant hand. Then. I will try to pierce the needle without through the rubber stopper into the wire and I can see the needle passing into the container as well from the glass bottle which is seen. Now once that is done I hold it upright so that the tip of the needle is not above the level of the fluid. Once that is done I push the plunger so that the air which is inside the chamber of the needle goes into the wire after which I release the plunger and you get to see because of the pressure automatically it gets loaded to the amount of air that I released in which is about 1 ml. Now the drug is already 1 ml that has been loaded. Once that is done, remove it and you are ready to go. Prior you are giving injection. One more thing that you look into, look for air bubbles. Just pull the plunger slightly. If there are air bubbles, just tap it so that the air bubbles disappear. Once that is done, push the plunger back so that the fluid that is there, the drug that is there within the chamber reaches the tip of the needle and you are ready to go. Once that is done, replace the cap, remove this needle, discard it, take a fresh needle with the cap and then you are ready to deliver the injection. Why is that we don't use the old needle for the reason being since we have already used it we do not know just not to contaminate the patient we will be using a new needle rather than the old needle that has been used up. We take the new needle to deliver an IM injection prior to that expose the region that needs to be chosen point number one talk to the patient and find out whether it is the same person to whom you are supposed to deliver a drug that is verification of the name you have already loaded the drug and you are ready to go. Now which I we have already discussed that I am not going into it. This is our mannequin. This, this is the pad in which we have chosen to deliver the injection and it is something like a deltoid muscle that has been wrapped up to the arm of the mannequin. Next all you would do is having identity asked whether the patient is non allergic talk to the patient and keep moving. Take the alcohol swab in the site where you have chosen to give the injection all you would do is you go from the site that you have chosen in a circular fashion keep smearing the alcohol from the center to the periphery and this should last for at least 30 seconds. Once you have cleaned the area that has been cleaned you don't re-clean it by bringing back the alcohol swab to the same site. You start from the center go in circles in a slow circular motion moving to the periphery and never you come back again to the area that has already been smeared. Once that is done discard the alcohol swab. Wait for it to dry. If, if the alcohol on the skin doesn't dry and you pierce the needle, what will happen? You will push the alcohol which is on the skin into the eye, into the soft tissue area and it hurts because it burns basically. Alcohol hurts the skin and it will be more painful and it will be a pathetic experience. Patient may not like to take an IM injection one more time in their life. So wait for it to dry. Normally we doctors we don't have time so what do we do we try to blow that area which is smeared with alcohol which again you are not supposed to do that because the mouth has a lot of bacteria it may go and settle in the area that has been smeared or cleaned with alcohol. Now next thing that you need to know before you do that is if the skin in the area where you are going to give an injection has a scar 
do not choose that area because it is heals by fibrosis it doesn't have a normal texture there it the bevel of the needle when it is pierced to that particular area it will be very painful so don't choose that area if there is any kind of an infection or sci any presence of any infection in and around don't choose that area choose another area for injection once the alcohol dries then all you would do is pull the needle hold the needle in your right hand so that the index finger sits between the on the hub of the needle once that is done now all you would do is with your least dominant hand retract the skin so that the skin is taut and stretched after which see to that prior, prior to piercing the needle the bevel of the needle that, that means the tip of the needle faces the bevel part faces upwards when you pierce the angle that is normally chosen when you give an IM injection is 90 degrees. So remain in a way, put, place the needle and the syringe at a 90 degree angle and you keep reassuring the patient, talking to the patient, asking his name, distracting by talking to him, asking what he has eaten, something that he is pleasant to talk to. As you are discussing, taut the skin, one, two, three, you can pierce the needle at a 90 degree angle. Once that is done, release the hand that stretches the skin, holding the needle straight all you would do is pull the plunger and check whether the tip of the needle whether there is any blood rushing into the chamber of the needle why if since it is an intramuscular injection it has to be put into the muscle rather than if you see blood rushing into the chamber all you would do is pull back the needle discard and redo the whole process all over again once Dr. you have Darin, can you just show the so that show the injection yes now yes. yeah okay. now what you will do is once you have seen that there is no blood in the, into the chamber, all you do is gently push the drug at a gradual pace till it is done. Now, once the drug has been delivered, all you would do is take a gauze piece, press it at the site where it has been delivered, pull the injection needle out and we are done. Next more important thing that you should remember is, are just Press at that particular side, hold it for a few seconds, don't go and massage that area and disturb the drug that has been delivered at that particular side. Ask the patient to support, if you can't hold it for a few seconds, get the patient to hold that particular gauze piece for a period of time that is about 30-40 seconds or even one minute maximum. Once that is done, they can discard it and they are ready to go. Last one, if you want to be safer again, take a small round plaster, put it on the side of an injection and cover it so that it is not exposed to external environment and you can avoid injection as well. So this is how you have to remember is if you are delivering an IM injection, there are some complications that you can expect of. Caution the patient. What do you tell them? And if the patient has got a huge lump kind of thing appearing after about 24 hours after the injection has been delivered, or even before that, it means one of it is an important thing that you need to note. That is one of the complications that can occur, which is called that injection abscess. If that happens, you need to treat the patient accordingly. accordingly. That is whatever that needs to be done, you need to do it. Next, if you want to avoid an abscess, if you take all the precautions that has been told of, like positioning the bevel of the needle facing up, maintaining absolute sterility throughout the process, you will not face anything. And moreover, if the skin has been cleaned well with an alcohol, you will not face that complication as well. Next one, if, the, if by any chance the patient says, I don't want to take a muscle injection in the gluteal region and the volume of injection that needs to be given is slightly more, and you still try because of the you 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 go with the patient and you say okay it can be taken on the deltoid you deliver that particular injection things can happen one once more time one one thing that it can happen would be is the hematoma second all you will have is an injection abscess in that particular area as well and the other thing that it can do it can happen again nerve injury or structures vital structural injury deeper in the deeper area of that particular muscle normally normally if you happen to be choosing the right needle if you happen to choose the right area based on the volume of drug and the type of drug that you have chosen i don't think you will encounter any such problems these are the things that you need to have in your mind and you